I will call to order the Andover uh, City Council meeting for Tuesday, October 9, 2018. The first item is a roll call, and I'll go to my far left. Brian Schwann, Council Member. Caroline Hale, Council Member. Troy Tabor, Council Member. Clark C.R. Nelson, Council Member. Greg Schneider, Council Member. Mike Warrington, Council Member. Donna Davis, Chief Financial Officer. Chad Russell, Fire Chief. Jennifer McCausland, Assistant City Administrator. Andrew Kovar, and for JT Klaus, City Attorney. Les Mangus, Director of Public Works. Susan Renner, City Clerk. Mark Detter, City Administrator. So far, so good. everybody's here except for the big man. He's out partying somewhere. Uh, the next item would be the invocation. Uh, seeing nobody, I'm suggesting that maybe Troy, you might want to lead us off with a little invocation. Humbly. I'll bow your heads in prayer, please. Um, Jehovah God, thank you for allowing us to, to be on up here tonight to, uh, to work for the city, to work for you, to, to bring to this... Uh, to this city what is needed and I pray that uh, you put in our in our minds and our hearts what it is that we need to do in order to have the best outcome for for our citizens and uh, pray always uh, for those that are less fortunate to help them find food shelter and love tonight in Jesus Christ's name amen before we go further I'd like to simply uh, give my condolences to the family of Zuri Hole who was a uh, planning commissioner for many, many years. He showed up occasionally here at City Hall and was uh, very instrumental in the development of our city. And uh, my condolences to his family. For he lived a great life, but I saw that he passed away very recently. With that, uh, if you'll rise, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> The next item on the agenda is the public forum, which allows anyone to say or present anything that they wish. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come up to the podium and give us your name and address and let us know what, you, what you're thinking? Yes, ma'am. Nobody? All right. Assuming that there is none, we will move on to item six which is the acceptance of the agenda. I'm asking whether or not there are any other items than that which you have presented so far? No, sir. All right. Mr. So President, I move to accept the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion by Caroline and a second by Brian to accept the agenda as presented. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number seven is a citizen request for the Andover High School Turkey Trot. Uh, those that are interested, please come forward to the podium and state your name, and we'll see what you have uh, going on here. Hi, my name is Alexis, and I'm a student at Andover High School. Andover High School is putting on a Trojan turkey trot on Wednesday, November 21st at 8 a.m. The race cost is $20 to, to participate, which will include a t-shirt and a registration packet with coupons. District employees get a discount of for the race of $15. The, ra the, money, will re the money we raise will go to a vari variety of programs and activities at our school. We are coming to you as sports and entertainment marketing class who is promoting the event and finding sponsors to help our cause. For our class fundraising money, we would spend on field trips to various places where we could see marketing in action. We would love to visit Interest Bank Arena and see how they use marketing in their workplace. Uh, my name is Drew Evans. Um, this coming Friday, we will be going around to different businesses around the area 
and asking them if they would like to help sponsor our event. Uh, we will hand out flyers to them, give them all of our information. And we wanted to give them something back in appreciation. And we have created different levels of donations uh, that come with different rewards. And these are the levels. All right, so my name is Ben Muling. Uh, the first uh, level is bronze sponsor and those who donate $50 and below, they will get program recognition in, uh, in our program. The next one is our silver sponsor and those are that donate $100 or more and they will get a recognition in our program as well as a t-shirt with their business logo on it. Uh, my name is Ashton No, and our gold sponsor is uh, above, or $250 and above, and that comes with a t-shirt, a cup, um, and recognition, recognition at the halftime game of a basketball game. And our last one is our platinum sponsors, and that's anywhere from 500 and up. You get a t-shirt, cup uh, recognition and a plaque and the biggest donor gets like a VIP uh, at the, all the basketball games and gets recognition. Very good. Uh, are you folks with the uh, Andover High School Sports and Entertainment Marketing class? Yes sir. yes sir. Is there anyone else here this evening that's in that class? My heart's out to you. It sounds like a wonderful opportunity. I also see in the audience is it Justin Hill or uh, what, what is your name, sir? I'm Officer Kinsel on the SRO at Andover High School. Very good. Do you keep these guys on the straight and narrow? I don't have to keep these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. President, the principal of Andover High is here as well. Very good. Thank you very much for being here. I'm sure that you're as proud of them as, as what we are. All right. Uh, Fellow citizens here, they have requested a turkey trot. Do we have a motion to consider? Mr. President, I make a move that we uh, approve the, uh, the action as presented, the motion. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion by Troy and a second by Mike to accept the Andover High turkey trot on the terms and conditions uh, for November 21st. And uh, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, folks. <laughs> Isn't it fun to come up here and talk? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, item number eight, we have a couple of presentations. Uh, the first is the Andover Food Bank. Hi there, my name is Mary Carson and I'm the Executive Director of the Andover Community Food Bank. So I'm here to give a presentation tonight about one of our programs that we ran over the summer. We asked the city for a grant and we were approved. So um, every summer the uh, Andover Food Bank provides a, a program called Summer Lunch. What Summer Lunch is, is we provide lunches to area children um, five meals a week with five milks. Now, a lot of people are confused by when I say a lunch. We purchase these from the Kansas Food Bank. They are already prepackaged. They have a protein, they have a fruit, they have a, probably a juice in there, but being a mom that I am, I make sure everybody gets a milk as well. Anyway, we just completed our eighth year. Um, I've, I've submitted some, some stats and some information that you guys can, can review, but just to kind of tell you how needed this program is, I didn't have the numbers for 2018, but in 2017, the children in our school districts who needed the, either the free or the reduced lunches was about 20%. And that's a pretty high number if you ask me for this area. So we served 1,920 lunches this summer to 400 children um, from 33 families. 13 of our families were new this year that had never come before. We do this all with a lot of financial support and a lot of volunteers. So we got support from the city council. We get a lot of support from uh, St. Vincent de Paul Church and their quilting group. We have a lot of individual donors. The food bank also ra um, raises funds through a Mother's Day card program where women make uh, unique cards and we sell those for donations to the food bank and all that money supports the summer lunch. Um, let's see. 
So the other thing is we have now partnered with the Andover United Methodist Church and St. Vincent de Paul. We used to hand out our lunches at the um, schools in the parking lot. There's not a lot of protection. It's really hot. There's, you, you can't get out of the weather there. So by hosting our lunches at those two facilities, we've created a safe environment, not only for our children, but for our volunteers as well. So we're really thankful for that. Um, I was asked uh, for what we need to do better next time. One of our biggest challenges is trying to predict how many children we're gonna serve. In 2017, we didn't purchase enough lunches. In 2018, we purchased too many lunches. Um, no worries about the extra lunches. We donate those to the uh, children's home here in town. They find them very useful when they have to drive out to Dodge City and pick up a kid at 11 o'clock at night. Here's something you can snack on in the car. You come in when it's not meal time. They've got something already ready for the children to eat, so that's great. Being that I'm with the food bank, I went ahead and slid in some information about the food bank, so let me, let me just tell you how great the food bank is doing right now. Um, so we recently changed from a distribution model to a shopping model, which is one of the um, greatest things I think we could have done for the citizens that come and visit the food bank. So instead of walking in, if you were a client to the food bank, and getting a uh, sack full of groceries. We now take you back to what we call our shopping room, which is a mini Dillon's, I guess you could say. And our clients are allowed to actually shop for the food that their family would eat. And um, it's kind of fun to see a family do meal planning right there in front of you while you're helping them pick out food. It also helps us reduce costs by we're now able to stock what we know people want. So when you call and ask, what can I, what can I bring to the food bank? Sometimes you're going to get some really odd requests because people do like olives, pickled beets, and it's like, you know, everybody wants to give green beans and corn, which is great. So the other thing we did recently in the last year was we became a separate 501c3. We found that um, a lot of organizations want to support the food bank, but when they see that 501c3 attached to a religious organization, either corporate policies or they just get scared about what are you going to use those funds for. So we, we created our own separate 501c3, even though we're still in the Methodist Church and they still support us greatly, but we've now broken that financial tie with the church. So um, I made a mistake here on my page. It says the city of Andover is having their food drive. The city of Andover had their food drive and delivered this weekend. They you guys collected 779 pounds of food, and that's tremendous, so we really appreciate that. So you can see coming up this weekend is Phil a Cruiser at Dillon's, so we'll uh, welcome any support there. Boy Scouts are having a food drive. The Andover schools will start collecting between now and the end of the year. Um, the, other, the other program that the food bank supports is the Andover Caring and Sharing. Um, we do the non-perishable end of that, so we collect all the food and make sure they're distributed evenly. Um, some of our current needs at the food bank, um, so we collect 80% uh, of our canned goods this time of year. We, last year we collected over 30,000 pounds of food, so um, it's a whole lot of food at one time of the year. So the one thing we could ask for is maybe smaller drives throughout the year. I know um, Prairie Creek Elementary School has a 100 day of school food drive where each class collects just 100 items of a different particular food. Uh, Sunflower used to do a, just a peanut butter and jelly drive. So those things are kind of fun. They're a little bit smaller, but they help fill that need between January and October. Um, the one thing most people don't think of when they think of the food bank is hygiene items. Everybody's really good about giving food and those kind of items, but Hygiene items can be pretty expensive and a lot of times isn't covered by some of the programs that we have in place to help, help our citizens who are needing financial assistance. And volunteers, I'll always take volunteers. I could take a day off and it's, it's a great thing. So that's all I have from the food bank. If you guys have any questions, I would welcome them. So. Well, I would say, first of all, I sincerely appreciate the report. Uh, you have a wonderful program and with uh, leaders such as yourself, I think that company's in great hands. Thank you. And I, secondly, I wanted to appreciate and thank the uh, local committee here that was on the public funds policy board that elected 
to contribute to this fund. I thought you did a very nice job of getting that accomplished. So I appreciate that, and I hope we can continue to work together. I hope so, too. We, we've had a good, good relationship so far. I don't see it dissolving anytime soon. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 8.2, the National Association of State Fire Marshals Award. This is all for the uh, Andover Police Department, I presume? Close, but not quite. They're <laughs> great partners to have, that's for sure. Before you, I want you to make sure and introduce every firefighter in here. I want to see if you know what their names are. Oh, God. <laughs> you can we do that LJ, throughout the process. John, and you said before, sir. Oh. LJ and John and Captain Cheslick and Lieutenant Cullinane and Jeremy Hussle in the back. Very good. And, of course, we have Chief Russell and myself. Oh, we don't count <laughs> We're <him>. fire marshal. <laughs> Uh, Mike Roosevelt, your fire marshal uh, here for the city. And uh, Mr. President, council and staff, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you this evening um, on the second evening of Fire Prevention Week here in our country. First off, I'd like to thank you personally and professionally for the support that you have and do continue to show to our agency, uh, to Chief Russell and your firefighters. Many departments struggle daily with operational needs and prevention efforts are often an uphill battle for those agencies. Your continued support of this agency enables its members, some of them are here tonight as you've already recognized, to excel in what we do. Partnering with the NFPA, the theme for Fire Prevention Week this year is look, listen, learn. The goal of that program is to encourage folks in our community to look around them, in your homes, in your schools, in your workplaces, for things that can cause a fire or be a public safety hazard or a hazard to yourself. Secondly, the listen part is to acknowledge when a alarm of some sort is activated in your presence and then take the appropriate action to that alarm, whether it's a burglar alarm, a fire alarm, a smoke alarm, whatever the case may be, take that appropriate action. And lastly is to learn. Learn about the disasters that can affect your community and learn what you can do to be a part of the solution for that. AFR has taken this one step further in our latest public safety signage campaign, which we spoke to you about some time ago. Um, and our campaign is uh, partnered with our various community partners, and you may have seen our messages on various digital sign boards, both here in Central Park on the CapFed Amphitheater boards, around town at various business partner uh, digital sign boards, or in places that don't have digital sign boards, yard signs such as these, and including out in our uh, rural response areas. The point of this particular one is to encourage you to always know where two exits are so that you can safely egress from whatever position you're in in your current environment. Along the lines of partnerships, the National Association of State Fire Marshals has partnered with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company for many years to recognize those fire departments that place life safety both at the top of their operational lists and their prevention to-do lists. To that end, this evening, representing the National Association of State Fire Marshals, I'd like to present Chief Russell and our AFR staff with the 2017 uh, Life Safety Achievement Award. The award is for the previous calendar year. The criteria is due to be turned in by July, and then they make the announcements uh, shortly before Fire Prevention Week. So, Chief, if you'd like to come forward, or, and, or if you want to bring up any of our captains and lieutenants or these guys uh, in all. So on behalf of... Uh, the State Fire Marshal Association. Uh, 2017 Life Safety Achievement Awards. This certificate is awarded to Andover Fire Rescue for your outstanding efforts on behalf of fire and life safety in your community, September 2018. Yeah. That's and I suppose I would stand for any questions if anybody should have any. Otherwise, thank you so much, and I, everyone have a safe evening. I actually have a question. Yes, ma'am. It may not relate to this, but it may be part of your celebration. I've noticed at the corner of 159th Street and 54 Highway, Kellogg, that an old quint, maybe, has been parked there for some time, and I just wonder if, what, what's going on with that. It, I, can, I can shed a little bit of light on that. That aerial apparatus was purchased from the city of Wichita by a, a private individual and corporation that is housed in our community. They utilize it for some of their own um, public messaging of sorts. Uh, periodically, it flies a very large American flag, which uh, is really quite an honor 
I think, to have an apparatus continue to serve in that manner. Uh, how it's used beyond that, I really couldn't speak to that, but I can certainly get you in touch with the folks that own it if you well, like. Well, I was just curious because I thought maybe it was supposed to be some kind of messaging since obviously it has just been sitting there with no actual fire people around, <laughs> but I, 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 uh, I just wondered. I did it. notice uh, the other day when I drove by that particular intersection that there's new decaling and placarding on the vehicle, but the traffic was such that I was not able to get my binoculars out to read it to be able to tell you what it actually says. Right. Well, I was kind of in the same way. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to look, but I need to drive. So, okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I uh, wanted to thank each and every one of you for doing a wonderful job, as you always do, and, and it's nice to be able to cover for the fire chief and the assistant and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is item nine, the consent agenda, items 9.1 through 9.6. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, I'm uh, moved to approve the consent agenda items 9.1 through 9.6. Second. Uh, all right, we have a motion by Greg and a second by Mike to accept the consent agenda items 9.1 through 9.6 as presented. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're now on item number 10 which is 10.1, uh, which is a zoning case Z-2018-05, the amended cornerstone addition preliminary planned unit development. Uh, as I call this item, I want to, before we proceed to the hearing, I'm going to ask the council if any of them intend to disqualify themselves because of any alleged conflict of interest. Nope. Seeing none, we shall proceed. Has the city clerk received any protest petitions? We have not received any petitions. Very good. I'm wondering, uh, Les, if you want to steer us in the right direction here on this particular zoning case. At the September meeting of the Planning Commission, a public hearing was held to uh, amend the cornerstone plan the unit development parcel six to allow this acute surgical center as a permitted use in parcel six parcel six is essentially the land around the existing kansas medical center the the owners of the hospital have formed a separate ownership to build this new acute surgical center but the two buildings would be connected and ultimately, the Planning Commission has unanimously recommended the amendment to the City Council for approval. That was a stalwart report. <laughs> uh, I uh, now ask the Council members, members if they've received copies of the drafts of the Minutes of the Planning Commission for the September 18, 2018 meeting. Yes. I see that's all in the affirmative. Uh, I assume that the applicant is not present. Is that correct? I don't see anyone to represent the applicant. I noticed that Steve Hadley was here last meeting for about three hours uh, while he was waiting for another item, so I don't blame him for not being here tonight. Uh, does anybody, uh, I will now open this up, does anybody in the public have any comments with regard to this zoning matter? Seeing none, we'll come to the bench. Uh, do we have any uh, comments and or motions with respect to the zoning matter? Mr. President, I move yes, to adopt the findings and factors and recommendation of the Andover Planning Commission to approve zoning case Z-2018-05 and adopt an ordinance adding acute surgical center as a permitted use in partial six of the Cornerstone Addition Preliminary Planning Unit Development Plan. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. We got a second by Troy. A motion for Greg to approve uh, Zone Case Z 2018-05, uh, 
uh, and adopting the findings and factors of the Andover Planning Commission. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Sometimes it pays not to show up. <laughs> Item number 11, Andover Senior Care, the termination of developer's agreement. Maybe somebody can explain to us what we're doing here. I'll take that one. Uh, Mr. President, council members, about a month ago, the city was contacted by uh, representatives of Andover Senior Care LLC who own a piece of property in uh, the Meadows third edition. They indicated that they were going through uh, uh, the process to sell that property to a potential purchaser and through the title search process uh, in that transaction, it was discovered that there is a developer's agreement on the real estate records filed on that piece of property from 2000, approximately June of 2000, that, re that required the developer at that time to install s certain unspecified improvements that were laid out in the plat. Um, they, the potential purchaser was requesting that that developer's agreement be terminated and removed from the real estate record on the property. Uh, Les can certainly um, chime in here if he has anything to add, but we looked at the records that the city had and did not appear to find any concerns with improvements and, and the development that was made on that property at the time. So uh, staff determined that it, in their view it would be appropriate to go ahead and terminate that developer's agreement um, and eliminate from the uh, real estate <coughs> records on that property. Very good. I appreciate that explanation. I noticed in the audience is Mr. Dennis Bush, the former mayor of our fine city. Do you have any comments with regard to this matter? I'm, just, I'm, I'm here to make sure that there's no fires put out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. He, We have uh, any further comments on the termination of the developer's agreement? Uh, if not, any motions with regard to the same? Mr. President. Yes. I'd like to uh, make the recommended motion of approving the termination of the developer's agreement between the City of Andover and Andover Senior Care LLC and allow, or, allow the mayor to sign such agreement. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. S Okay, a second by Brian. We have a motion by Troy and a second by Brian to approve the termination of developer's agreement as presented. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you for uh, coming, Mr. Bush. Okay. <laughs> Item number 12, Founders Real Estate LLC, Kansas Medical Center. 12.1. Somebody help us out there on? Take that one also. As you may recall, uh, the city previously passed a resolution of intent and approved tax abatement um, for a renovation project for Founders Real Estate, which is the entity that owns the, the actual land and building where the Kansas Medical Center is located. Uh, and so this project is a remodel of the existing facility in their intermediate unit, which is their pre-op and post-op area and part of the uh, CT PET scan area. Uh, they have spent approximately or a little over a million dollars on this project and the time is now uh, to go ahead and issue the IRBs. And so the ordinance that's on the agenda approves the issuance of the industrial revenue bonds, uh, authorizes the mayor and the city clerk to sign all the appropriate documents uh, for that to, uh, to happen, and the closing, if approved, is scheduled for October 19th. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about the IRB or the process. I might state that the mayor and myself attended, uh, along with the uh, city manager at all, the city administrator, meeting with the uh, Kansas Medical Center on all the details of this, and is very impressive, and uh, I'm hoping that things will go smoothly here this evening. Any questions from anyone with regard to this matter? <coughs> not, uh, maybe we can entertain Mr. The President, motion. I move to approve the ordinance issuing $1,500,000 in City of Andover Industrial Revenue Bonds for the purpose of acquiring, constructing, equipping, furnishing, and installing renovations and additions to an existing acute care 
hospital and pay certain cost of issuance of said industrial revenue bonds. Second it. We have a motion by Caroline and a second by Mike to accept the and approve the ordinance issuing a million and a half dollars uh, for the City of Andover industrial revenue bonds as presented. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We now move on to lucky item number 13, 159th Street Sewer Relocation. 13.1 is Trans Systems Design Proposal. Have you got this one? I think we'll let you figure this one out. <laughs> okay. During the course of the design of the road project on 159th Street from Central up to the KTA, we discovered that there's a, a run of sanitary sewer in the Teradyne subdivision that doesn't accommodate future growth to the north. And as you all know, we're we're working with the school district to develop a site on the north side of the KTA. So in order to facilitate sanitary sewer to cross the Kansas Turnpike, we need to lay a parallel sewer in 159th Street that's a larger pipe and it's deeper in order to extend north. Uh, we've we have been talking with Trans Systems, who's doing our road design, and we feel it's just best for them to design the sewer so that they can coordinate utility relocations and storm sewer and all of the improvements on the 159th Street project with this sewer. One question that I have is that going through the contract, it appears to be a, a lump sum uh, fee arrangement of $29,822. Correct. Is, is that should that be incorporated within the motion itself yes okay I don't know if you heard my comments there folks but mm -hmm. uh, with that in mind uh, any further discussion what side of the street is the sewer going to be placed it would be on the east side of the street the west side of the street is actually in the city of Wichita why would it only begin at Oxford Court, you might think that it would need to go all the way down to well, the uh, central. <laughs> that's interesting, Caroline. There was a sewer project back in the early 80s that extended a, a large sewer all the way from the wastewater plant up to serve Teradyne. And then it was rerouted off of 159th Street back in the neighborhoods to serve the, the clubhouse. And along in about the mid 1990s, the Teradyne Third subdivision was brought online, and the sewer extended for that subdivision was extended much shallower and a smaller pipe, which didn't accommodate any future extension to the north. Okay, so really the problem just begins at that area then. Okay. Yes. Those are excellent questions. Any further discussion? Mr. President, I'll make a motion. <clears throat> I motioned uh, to approve the Trans Systems proposal for design of the sanitary sewer relocation on 159th Street between Oxford Court and the Kansas Turnpike re required by the 159th Street Improvement Project in the lump sum fee of $29,822. Is there a second? monthly. Yes. And upon the completion of the work. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Greg and a second by Caroline to approve the Trans Systems Design Proposal as presented. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are rolling. <laughs> Item number 14.1, we got some fantastic uh, codes that we're going to be undertaking here. Uh, this is building and inspection codes, 14.1. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. President, council members, if I may help you keep rolling, <laughs> I'd like to... Are we rolling push. back up? We're rolling back up the hill now. No, I want to overview all three of these 
because they're highly similar and then you as you consider each one you can ask me any further questions you would like uh, so we're for on 14.1 but the next two that follow Steve can I interrupt you for a second just real quick yes sir um, would it be appropriate if we uh, if uh, if we all agreed to approve these all three at one time since they're all very similar sounds fair and reasonable to me <laughs> you know I think we I think we're yeah if, if all right, the motion would, includes all three ordinances that okay. would be fine right. Steve would you would you like to just go all over all three of them at once yes sir thank you <laughs> good idea <clears throat> these three are highly specialized codes they mainly apply to commercial properties and they're of interest to electrical and mechanical engineers, plumbers, mechanical contractors, and electricians. Um, we are several years out of date, and these proposals uh, adopt codes Wichita adopted some years ago, and the amendments to these codes follow the Wichita amendments very closely. That's, that's of interest and important to our contractors for the sake of uniformity. Um, I don't know that I have anything more to add to that. JT, our city attorney, furnished the form of the ordinance some months ago. I wrote the technical amendments, and uh, you're free to ask any questions that you want. And we consulted with uh, contractors and... Uh, uh, they were... We did the same process with the International Building Code some months ago. We maybe had one response. I sent these out to all of our contractors in WABA. I got one response this time. Uh, following Wichita makes for a pretty smooth process. So they have been vetted, although a short time ago. So we're essentially replacing the mechanical, the electrical, and plumbing codes as you are recommending. Yes, sir. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, sir. Uh, that we approve 14.1, uh, 14.2, and 14.3, um, which would be the approving the ordinance of the adopting the 2015 International Mechanical Code, approving the and adopting the 2014 National Electrical Code, and approving and authorizing adoption of the 2015 Uniform Public Code, uh, and authorize the mayor to sign the ordinance. Do we have a second? Second. We got a second uh, by Greg. And uh, the motion is to approve 14, 1, 2, and 3 for the mechanical code, electrical code, and plumbing code, uh, all in one fell swoop that I think is fair and reasonable. <laughs> Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Man, that worked. It passed. <laughs> Efficiency there. Good job. Steve, I just can't thank you enough, buddy. We're still rolling downhill. The next item on the agenda is an executive session. Mr. President, if we could get a motion to uh, go into executive session for 20 minutes to uh, use the attorney-client privilege um, to consult with our attorneys, Andrew Kovar and Mr. David Seeley, and include the uh, community development director, public works director, uh, and myself, and of course the council, uh, I would hope that that could be the motion. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion by Greg, second by Brian, to go into executive session on the terms uh, provided by our city administrator. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We are in executive session for 20 minutes. We've got a deck of cards out here for anybody that's interested. <laughs>
rejoin the so city moved. council meeting. Motion by Mike and a second by second by Greg to come out of executive session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are back in session. The last item on the agenda prior to member items uh, is the fact that the Kansas Court of Appeals in the case of Seacrest LLC versus City of Andover, Kansas has ruled uh, in that case uh, to approve the zoning that was requested by Seacrest LLC. And uh, I guess my, we can either make a discussion or entertain any motions uh, for any further action in the judicial arena. Uh, any, any motions? Such as an appeal or anything of that nature? <laughs> Seeing none, that, that matter uh, is resolved in, in that fashion. Uh, the next last item are the member items. Uh, I would go with Brian first. I'm good tonight. Thank you. Uh, I have no item. Troy. Yeah, just, um, yeah I do. Uh, I went to the Kansas League of Municipalities conference this weekend. Um, actually, I went Monday because I had other items this weekend. I missed Trump, who was actually at the same hotel, basically. But uh, there was a couple things that were brought up that I think are important to us um, that we might do a little bit of research on and, and get a better idea. One of them is um, that there's a uh, state law currently, I think it was passed last year, but I'm not sure if it was fully implemented. And then there's a federal law called the Streamline, it's called the Streamline uh, Bill, which has to do with small cell wireless facilities so basically cell towers is what I'm trying to get to um, and it's uh, gonna give the uh, cell phone companies AT&T Verizon Cox whatever really the ability to put um, devices anywhere they want without us being able to tell them no just a second it, didn't we discuss that uh, darn it it was the, well, the, the smaller tower <laughs> we did we did ah. Troy, those uh, Dang it. those those regulations are reflected in our UDM. Okay, uh, they reflect the Kansas statute that's right. currently law, mm -hmm. and there is a FCC rule that is very similar. We've reviewed it, and and we we think we're in close enough compliance with it that there's no reason to change the course at this point because we know this streamline bill is out there we don't know if it'll be passed but okay we'll we'll react to that when it's time i, I happen and to be talking the, to way jack today about it i'm sorry you finished them. I thought small cell and cell towers are two different things okay a cell tower is that 200 foot structure that you see every couple miles small cell could be down to the block level where they just put a device on a utility pole or a street light that, that handles capacity issues, not coverage issues. The big tower is for coverage, so you can drive your car from point A to point B and you've always got a signal. These small cells are more about picking up the excess capacity and getting it off of the wireless grid into a wired grid. Okay. Well, two quick things on that. One is that um, the Irma Diggs, who is our ad, our lobbyist in in uh, Washington D.C., had mentioned that sometimes those are as big as refrigerators. And a second piece would be that uh, I was talking to Wage, Dan Wajack today, and he had mentioned that, for example, um, somebody one of the carriers had put a big device or a device in a person's yard, not in the the city's right of way. And so when, the, uh, when they were contacted, they were told, well, the city has no jurisdiction here. And then the response was, well, what has to happen? Does the homeowner then have to sue whoever the carrier is to get it moved out of their yard? And the answer is yes. So take it for what it's worth. That's what I, I, 
I, I guess, oh, Troy, I'm so. glad you brought it up because I emailed the assistant city administrator and public works director today. They, they met with Verizon and, you know, obviously we've been through enough legal stuff where probably nobody's very anxious to get into another issue. But Les's description, you know, I don't have any problem with that. But when you're talking about what you're talking about, a refrigerator size unit or a 10 foot, 20 foot pole, I mean, I don't know what the parameters will be on these things, but we just spent $3.75 million burying power lines along Andover Road, and Westar probably spent that much, if not more. And I, you know, my position, and I'm sure our attorneys being here don't want to uh, really don't want to delve into this very badly, but I will say we adopted a comprehensive plan that said we were try our goal was to bury all utilities on Andover Road, and we put money towards that, and that was before the legislator took this action. And so I think it's worth exploring at least our options of regulating this. I know what the law says. You know, the law also says some other things uh, about various things. But, you know, we've made a commitment based in, in good faith uh, that we would be able to regulate and uh, landscape and beautify our right-of-ways. And then, again, the state comes along and says, you know what, sorry about that, but uh, we got a different idea. Uh, and the comprehensive plan is a public policy document uh, we acted on good faith, spending money on that with a certain uh, goal. And now, you know, like you have pointed out, they've just kind of come along and said, well, that's too bad on that. And, you know, and I don't know, you know, I, I would like the council at least to think about the issue and, uh, you know, see what our, our possibilities are here. But just to concede right away, you know, I, I think we could at least have a discussion with the carriers, maybe if we just have... A restriction on Andover Road, and we have to concede the rest of it. But uh, you know, that's just my thoughts on it that I, I wanted to bring up and have discussion on. Okay, good, very good point. Uh, yeah, um, one other thing that I think might be important to look at too is that there that the uh, the National League for Cities has a grants database that we have access to that has a tremendous amount of granting opportunities that might be smart for us to keep an eye on and regularly look at. Um, for example, there's a big pot of money for uh, water projects, including like gray water projects, and we're looking at maybe doing something like that pretty soon. So maybe uh, that's something we wanna think about, look into, and maybe put a process together that we go through the grants databases that might, uh, items that might be relevant to what we're trying to work on. That's probably already done, just like the other thing you talked about. You probably talked about it two weeks ago, but if not, then um, I think that's pretty relevant to us. And there's a lot of other things talked about, but I won't go over them. Some good stuff, though. So I'd recommend um, in the future that everyone think about going, especially when it's here or in Wichita. Very good, Troy. Greg? Uh, nothing. None tonight. What? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a couple of minor things I wanted to uh, uh, with regard to tr what the last item Troy was bringing up one of the items on our consent agenda that 9.6 is the Four Mile Creek water reuse consultant requesting for qualifications so your issue may be rather relevant for us right now I'd actually spoke with um, uh, one of the people in charge in Wichita about that because he was discussing I went to the city council meeting in Wichita a month ago and they were happened to just be discussing that exact grant and I went and talked to him afterward and mentioned what we were looking at doing he says yeah that's exactly what it's for so I think it would be smart to for sure to have that conversation ask him you know what who do we talk to get us some point with your contact that kind of thing you know our our city staff uh, and to an extent the mayor and and myself have been involved with trying to get that gray water resolved to come up to Teradyne and Flint Hills and so forth. Very difficult project, uh, but your your item may be extremely relevant because it's it's happening and we're we've just authorized some money to to try to get that thing going. So uh, your point's well taken there. The other item I simply wanted to say is that I appreciate uh, all the cooperation tonight while we pinch hit for for Ben and. Hope his vacation goes well, but I thank you guys very much.
yeah, for uh, what you've done this evening. Uh, any other comments from anybody? I had just a couple, um, I have a couple pieces of hardware tonight to show you, present you. Um, last, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday prior, we did the ribbon cutting of the Redbud Trail Extension, as well as the new Trailhead Park. And um, Artie prevent, presented you all with another plaque, um, and it's very nice. I don't know if the camera can see it, so um, we will find a nice place to uh, put that up in City Hall so that the community can enjoy that plaque as well. And then Susan, our city clerk, also attended the league conference, and so she collected the hardware there for us to get our gold star for safety. I think this is like the seventh or so year in a row, which gets us um, the greatest discount possible on our work comp insurance um, as a result of your safety committee's work, and they do meet Thursday morning, so... Um, I'll be sure to share that with them as well. Very good. Anyone else? I just want to remind the council that on October 18th, uh, the Kansas Joint Legislative Ta Vision Task Transportation Vision Task Force, I think is the title, is having inputs for local, or a meeting for local input on uh, highway projects. Of course, our big issue is the Kellogg expansion and particularly uh, the anticipated problems at 143rd and Kellogg. And so the mayor will be giving uh, testimony and a presentation before that committee. If anybody can uh, make themselves available, the meeting actually starts at 10, but my guess is the local input won't start till between noon and 1230. There'll be a lot of people there. We're confined to 10 minutes. Uh, we're working on testimony to submit to the committee and then a presentation as well for the mayor to make. We have no more than 10 minutes possibly even less, but we just want to make sure our project is put in the 10-year plan or hopefully recommended to be put in the 10-year plan. Additionally, we have a public meeting October 22nd on uh, Yorktown Road, the Yorktown development, uh, the annexation of Bicentennial, and uh, hopefully we're talking about South District Stadium, the tennis complex over there too. Uh, but that's a pretty big meeting, uh, and anybody from the council could make it to that. That's at Andover Central High School at 7 o'clock on the 22nd. And then I just sent out an email to you to remind, uh, to just mention to you that some developers have asked us to re-examine the neighborhood revitalization map. We went to the school district last night and asked them to put uh, that issue on hold. Uh, we've got, of course, we've approved it and the county's approved it, but at the workshop we'll talk about that issue and uh, just have a discussion. Okay, I think, Troy, you have something else here? Yeah, I, I apologize. Um, one other thing, and it, I was just kind of briefly told about it by Dan Wajak again today, was that uh, it sounds like there's a task force that's been put together by Butler as well as other schools to discuss um, ways to, to look at funding or, or even decide if a community college is even still relevant and it might be smart to have uh, someone on a on the city city or the city council or something to be a part of that discussion um, since it seems to impact us quite a bit um, right now I'm told that it's all teachers and and people from the schools not so, so there's no real representation from any city councilmember Warrington is our liaison to the community college so I think that would be great for him to when is that? <laughs> oh, see, it, it, it was really like kind of an under the radar yeah, thing. I haven't heard anything. Oh, you're that. really on top of it. <laughs> no, yeah. It might it's be first brand I've heard new, about it. but my understanding yeah. is it was really kind of a you know quiet we, thing. We so. did such a uh, bang up job last meeting. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know if that's the same task force that the president indicated she was going to gather to just. Gosh, that. I think that's something you might want to kind of take a look at. Maybe you can help have these guys help you get yeah. through that. I think that's a point very well taken, Troy. Yep. All right. Uh, seeing nothing else, uh, any motions to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Troy. Second. Second by the liaison from Butler County. <laughs> All those ready to adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. All right. Thank you, folks.